care how many items of clothing you own. Does it matter? Do you care? If you don't, then this is probably not the right video for you. If you're intrigued, keep watching. Thank you for purchasing your tickets to the thrilling and exclusive reveal of the wardrobe of a 20-something dopamine dressing sustainable fashion influencer wannabe. Please take your seats, buckle in, the ride is about to begin. Hi, I'm Shara from the Green Stocking Society and today I'm going to be analysing every single piece of clothing that I have bought in the last two years. Why, you might ask? That's a very fair question. A few reasons. Number one, having visibility over your wardrobe makes it much easier to get the most use out of everything that you've bought because rewearing and restyling is an art form. And number two, it shows you how much you're spending on clothes and like how you're doing in terms of making your wardrobe a little bit more sustainable. But what do you get out of this video? As we go through, I'm gonna be giving my recommendations for the top brands that I'm currently loving and have been buying from in the last two years and what I love about them. So definitely stay tuned for all of those juicy recommendations. I really hope I don't have any skeletons in my closet because that would be a little bit embarrassing. I don't remember buying any skeletons in the last two years. So my very scientifically rigorous methodology consisted of going through all of my emails from the last two years to see everything that I've bought online and then also just going to my wardrobe and reminding myself of the stuff that I've bought in vintage shops or charity shops or stuff that's been gifted to me for like birthdays and Christmases, that kind of thing. And then I made a list of all of those and that's basically it. In total, I acquired 62 new items or new to me items of clothing in the last two years. Is that a lot? That's what I was wondering too. According to one recent study, 74 is the sufficient number of items to have in your wardrobe today. In the 1960s, for comparison, it's estimated that people had about 40 pieces in their wardrobe, not including underwear. I believe. According to the fashion law, the average American consumer buys 59 garments a year, but the resale platform ThreadUp actually has its own estimate, which is even higher at 119 garments a year. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, one dump truck of textiles is burned or buried every single second. So clearly we have an overconsumption problem going on here. And that is something that we could do many, many a video about. So I won't digress too much here. ThreadUp actually has a brand new fashion footprint calculator which I'm going to be trying out in the next video so if that sounds intriguing and potentially a little bit problematic, spoiler alert, it might be, then do hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it when that video comes out. I have to say that five out of the 62 items were gifts and 16 of them also came free with my job so we get to take home any returns that we fancy, anything that would otherwise be going through our circular process to become recycled into new materials and new products. So that's a very fortunate and privileged position to be in for sure, meaning that 34% of those 62 items were actually things that I got for free. But 66% were still things that I bought myself and 68% of those were purchased online and 32% were purchased in a physical shop like a vintage boutique, things like that. Including the things that I got free from work, 52% of my 62 items have come from secondhand sources, which I was actually really impressed with. In terms of what I bought, I've broken it down into different categories such as jumpers, tops and outerwear and things like that. So tops came out on well, on top with a 22%, followed closely by jumpers and then by accessories like shoes, bags, scarves, that kind of thing. So what did I actually buy then? My top favourite brands across the last two years have definitely been Lucy and & Yak and Tala, with special mentions going out to Viron Shoes, Organic Basics Underwear and also Wooker Period Pants. Anyone who knows me in real life will know that if I'm not wearing at least one item of Lucy and Yak clothing at all times, then something is probably terribly wrong. Lucy and Yak are an independent small business with a few physical shops around the UK. They have massively blown up in the last five years thanks to their really diverse and inclusive marketing and being pioneers of what they're calling the comfort movement. You've definitely seen their dungarees around 
everywhere. Over the last two years, I've acquired 15 new items from Lucy and Yak, which is about a third of everything new that I got. But the great thing with them is that they also have a really comprehensive Depop page and they also have a sales section that's always live on their website as well. Most of their materials are made from organic cotton and there's also some recycled plastic bottles thrown in there, um, as well as some Tencel as well. Tala is another definite firm favourite for recycled and sustainably made gym gear, but my favourite purchase from them has to be this puffer that turns into a gilet, which is so cool and I've basically worn it every single day since I got it five months ago. Vuron is probably the edgiest brand that I own clothing from. If you follow them on socials, you will see what I mean by that. They just make the coolest vegan apple leather boots with recycled rubber soles. They are pretty expensive, they are quite an investment, but I actually managed to get a pair on eBay for about a third of the RRP, which I was super happy with. I wear these with everything. These Organic Basics tennis socks are the best socks that I have ever had, and these Wooka period pants have been something that I've been slowly collecting over the last year or so. They're just so much more comfortable than wearing tampons or pads and worrying about that, and they're made from recycled materials. If you want some more information about those brands and why I think they're so great in terms of sustainability, then I will be doing a more in-depth favourites video coming up soon, so hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it. And if that's already out by the time that you're watching this, then lucky you! Important to note as well that I did find a lot of great pieces on eBay, Vintage, Depop, but also in-person Vintage Kilo sales. These are so great, they are really cheap and you get some really unique pieces. And of course it's supporting secondhand and thrifting. There's a few different ones that kind of go around the country and they're sort of every single weekend, so I'll leave a few links in the description below so you can see when the next one is coming up near you. Of course in general the more that you wear something the cheaper it becomes per wear. So if you buy a dress for £80 and end up wearing it 50 times the cost per wear is £1.60, whereas if you were to buy a dress for £20 but then only wear it twice the cost per wear would be £10. So I wanted to assess how much I actually wear these clothes that I've got in the last two years, so I went down the list and I gave every single item a rating of whether it was a favourite find or an on occasion. So if it's a favourite find then I wear it at least every three weeks, and if it's on occasion then I only wear it less than that. And I actually found that there's about a 50-50 split, so there's definitely more that I could be doing to utilise those clothes that I maybe only wear in the winter or maybe only wear in the summer and styling them across seasons and layering them up and things like that to get more use out of them throughout the whole of the year. Thank you for taking that extended tour of my wardrobe. The show is coming to an end soon, but here are some parting thoughts. Over the last couple of years I've really been able to find my own style, the things that I love wearing, I've discovered that I really like colour, I really like pattern, I like mixing patterns, and just the shapes and the styles of things that I like to wear, and now that I've figured that out I feel like I've basically got everything that I need, like there isn't anything that I really still feel like I need to be able to be creative with my wardrobe and still express myself. I think it's so important to experiment and to find your own style because then the pieces that you end up really loving you'll just continue re-wearing because they feel like you. Over the last couple of years I've also definitely become a lot more intentional with what I buy, so before I hit checkout I tend to ask myself these three questions. Number one, do I absolutely love this? Like does it spark joy? Number two is do I have other things in my wardrobe already that I will definitely wear this with? And number three is have I let this sit in the basket for about a week so that I can come back to it and consider it and make sure that I really, really do want it. I hope this has been interesting and entertaining to watch. If you've done your own wardrobe audit I would love to know the results below so let me know in the comments and until next time stay kind, see you later, bye!